All right. I am Harrison Goldstein. I'm here with Dan Higgins for the CCTV podcast. Dan, thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you for asking me. Of course. Um, yeah, so really excited to get this interview going, get a little different uh, perspective. In our last interview with um, Miles Jewell and Lauren Glenn Davidian, it was a big focus on uh, video media and community media. So you're a photographer, so that'll be um, a new perspective to have. So I think that'll be really cool. Um, so when did you get into photography? How long have you been doing that? And why did you, what drew you to that? Um, when I was at the University of Michigan, I, I, I did a class in photography, but I, I never really started using it as a way to integrate community members until I was doing an archeology span project uh, in the Great Lakes. Uh, Kelly's Island mm -hmm. and the crew had disappeared for one reason or other and we were supposed to be gathering information and I, got, I hired an airplane and a pilot and went up and did an aerial view of the town and I blew up a big uh, print of it. Yeah, so early drone photography. It was like a magnet. Yeah. And it didn't matter where I went. People wanted to come over and look at the print and tell me what they saw in it. Um, it was a great device for for finding out where potential sites were, mm -hmm. which is what I was supposed to be doing. But people told me things about their lives, you know, like, this is my, oh, that's my house. Oh, we do need a new roof, my husband told me. Yeah. And so it's, it's really doing it as an archaeological um, device that I realized how great a magnet of mm -hmm. can be. People, people don't want to talk about art particularly yeah people will tell you everything they want to talk about something that they can relate to more so they'll tell you about a, a, a photograph and, and if they're in it or their subject is in it, it, it it's a magnet yeah i mean that's so i'm a photographer too so that is my main medium i drifted a little toward more towards video um in terms of school just because i didn't necessarily want to go to school for photography um i want to kind of get something newer under my belt but that's definitely one of my favorite parts is like doing taking photos of events and stuff and then being like look at this awesome picture i got of you and like oh and then like if it's like a skiing picture because that's a lot of what i do they'll like critique themselves like wow if i didn't have this picture i wouldn't have been able to know that like my foot is dragging in this way or i'm not my shoulder isn't forward enough um so I definitely think that that's a, well, I know that's a huge part of photography is the connection that it can bring. Um, and for me, the, the, I'm really not a photographer. I'm not a very good photographer. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm an artist who uses photography. That's mm -hmm. what I think of it. And, and for me, the exhibition and finding the context to show work in is just as important as the making of the work. Yeah, 100%. So yeah, that's also, that's really interesting that the, more archaeological like physical science side is what attract like kind of brought you in to the more art side so do you think how do you think your path would have been do you think you would have gone as much into photography if it wasn't for renting this plane or when i first started at uvm i was teaching printmaking yeah uh, i was there was a dark room. I was <clears throat> showing students how to use it and this is they wanted to have credit for it it was during that period where universities were beginning to integrate photography as an academic yeah. subject. And this was screen printing, or was it like metal? This was actually engraving. Okay, yeah, I've heard a little bit about that. I haven't gotten a chance to do it. Yeah. Acids. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of... And, and, and it was, I'd done it, I could, I could teach it, but the photography became uh, something that I became associated with here. Yeah, so, um, yeah, going off of that class on photography, when you talk... Off of the screen making class, you wound up teaching a photography and um, community class. I was right? part time at UVM. Okay. Classes yeah. In the art department. Yeah. So did you teach a community photography and community class? Yeah. Or? That was much later. Okay. That, that was. Um, see, I was teaching up there over thirty years. Yeah. Yeah. Long history. <laughs> so, so my favorite class um, that I taught toward toward the end of my time up there was called the Photograph and Community, mm. <laughs> and the interesting thing was getting people, like UVN students would say, oh, we're not part of the community. Yeah. So you had to work for a little bit to realize that everybody does have a community. Yeah. Or wants to be part of one. Mm -hmm. And then each student in that class would 
define a community and work with it. And they had to show their work as they made it in the community. Yeah. So it, it, so it fulfilled that whole circle. Yeah. So you would say that, like, from your point of view, your perspective in teaching it, that you were less of less teaching them about photography and community and more guiding them to find community with photography or I was, I was i was guiding them to choose a community and then use photography as a way of accessing the community mm, okay and that included showing the work in the community yeah i think that's that's a big part because i'm like showing the work and giving it back to the community because i'm working on a documentary right now and everyone it's the first question is like what is this going to be used for am i going to be able to see it will you send this to me and i think that's uh, issue that happens a lot of time in like documentary work or photo work is that you go take a picture of someone and then they never see it and like it's ever we've had this conversation like it can be very exploitive um, so I think that's a very important part of this type of photography and video work is giving it back to the community because if you're just going into the community and taking pictures you're not doing anything but if you're going into the community taking pictures and showing them it's building more of a community community rather than just showing how you saw this community. Well, here at Channel 17, it's community video. Yeah. So, you know, so it's about community. Yeah, 100%. Um, so how, so you talked a little bit about photography and community. That's kind of what we've been talking about. Um, but how would you say you used your photography to give back to the community other than just, like we said, putting it in the uh, community because I know with your I don't know what's just the onion photos or what, what what's the name for that the you, I know there's a name for it it's on the tip of my tongue well one of the first projects I, a lot of my I've worked in different communities yeah but Winooski has been for the last 50 years an interesting place for me mm -hmm. I, I do a project that I think is going to engage the community yeah and, and maybe what you're talking about is in the um, early, when I, one of my first projects was a, a series of images I made of people holding it. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And, and um, you know, and, and Winooski at the time was a very different community. It was, a, it was downtown. Everybody spent time in the bars and the restaurants. Yeah. Main Street was active. And so I would ask people I would say not can I take your picture which is kind of lame mm -hmm. can you help me with the project I'm doing yeah would you really let me photograph you holding it on and wording it like that I've found works a lot better than asking someone to do something rather than including them as it absolutely and and, and there was resistance and yeah. just no why would I do that you know and uh, kids would do it and I got not a number of people do it but what I what I rented Winiski had a lot of empty storefronts mm -hmm after the mills had closed yeah and i rented a space for a month and every day i put a photograph up in the window of a new portrait just one one and day two there's two of them yeah okay day three there's three of them and i could watch people in the restaurants coming out going up pointing going in bringing their friends out and so it became a community theater piece in a yeah way. and by the end of the week people were asking me when I was going to include them, yeah, and and not wanting to do it on the street, saying, "Can you come do it in my mm. in my house? I have a beautiful house." Yeah, so so it, it that's an ex a very good example because they didn't know me until the end of the week. Yeah, and then they wanted to be part of this thing. So it was really a week. You think it took for people to like warm up? Oh yeah, that idea. That's yeah. that's pretty impressive. I think that at the end of the week they were they saw their friends. Yeah, they were jealous. It was, you know, so it became it became. You got a certain cafe uh, cachet if you were willing to have your picture up in there. Yeah, and then I, and then I, I followed it. I, the next year, I, I did on your portraits of groups. Mm. Every group I could think of in Winooski. and I didn't have just the, the little uh, storefront of mine, but it went the whole street. Oh, okay. And people would walk. It would take twenty minutes walking down the street. Yeah, mm. stories, and and that. <clears throat> I, that's not easy to do now because it's that's not the kind of yeah. time when a ski is. It's much more broken up. Yeah. At the time, you know, everybody went to Bill's Diner and the American restaurant. And yeah, everybody was there. It's so you have to you have to um, 
you have to find a way of showing the work that's going to engage the community, whatever the community is. Yeah. So what would you say was um, with that project was to you, what was like the whole thing most, what was like the most redeeming part of that? Was it just seeing the community like coming together or was it something less obvious or more subtle? Well, or it was a very selfish part. Yeah. It allowed me to, to, to meet a lot of people, to have fun with them, to elaborate, mm -hmm. uh, to hear their stories. And that's a big part of yeah. my selfish part. Then in terms of having the community experience the show, then the stories continue. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm not privy to all the stories. But yeah. People coming out would, would talk about who they knew. Yeah. And, and that's another big, important part of the, the whole thing. Yeah, that's really interesting. How I, I'm, I'm very surprised at how um, quickly people took to it, because I don't think it would take a much longer than um a week but that's it really i mean that could just be the uh, like generation i'm growing up in that people are more hesitant to do things or well everybody saw them all yeah because they're all everyone out of the restaurants so, yeah like, what is this what is what, what's why, why are you how'd you get in there yeah you were able to get everyone's interest yeah, and, then, and uh you know um people saw it and then they, they contacted me you know a woman said i want to be in there but you got to come you know up to my apartment mm -hmm. there was a, a a girl who was living in her garage yeah she said I, I have a dress my parents hated but i want to be fil filmed in that i mean so there were so people definitely collaborated on how they wanted to be seen mm. that, that was really important that's interesting so i also know that was it this series that the fleming museum asked you to display or was it a different one <clears throat> I think the Onion Portraits, I had the opportunity of yeah. going at the Fleming, but it, but it would be, have taken it out of the context that it was in. And that, that, that's an important piece for me is I wanted the photographs to be on the street. Mm -hmm. A real natural. Whiskey. I didn't want them up on the hill at an a art gallery. Yeah. People put on their art glasses mm -hmm. and see it differently. And that'll take what was community media and make it more just media which is, it would, takes well, away it would make it hard yeah it would make it, it would, you can't go into a museum you know without putting on your art class mm -hmm. yeah it's a different it's a different way of looking at yeah 100 percent um so we've talked a lot about it indirectly but what is to you what does community media mean if you could sum it up what would you say community media is uh, well media is so different now mm -hmm. media is a big umbrella yeah um I would say, um, well, I would say that, that whatever the media is, whether it's uh, photographs or whether it's uh, video or whatever it is, it, it's 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 interacting inside the context of the media, and hopefully, getting people in the in the uh, community to. Um... <laughs> getting people who are in the um, uh, community to appreciate it. Yeah. Enjoy it. To hopefully make connections. I mean, we're. It's harder and harder. The I think in nineteen in what are we in twenty twenty two? Yeah, to almost twenty three. With people that you don't know, and the and the communities are much more broken up now too. Yeah. So, when I was doing, say, the Onion Portraits in what nineteen seventy three or six or something, um, everybody met. Everybody was downtown. Yeah. That's not the case now. No, it's not. You know, it's everyone where they live. Old people are in their silos. They're in their senior homes. Mm -hmm. uh, Winooski is, on paper, everyone says it's the most diverse community in, in Vermont. Yeah. But you wouldn't know that if no. you went into downtown Winooski. No, you would have no idea. So you've got to find, so to, what is the community? There are many different sub-communities. Yeah. And how do you access to them? And how do you get their stories to spill over into part of that's not their community? The one big central community. How do you, yeah. How do you get? How do you get the? Uh, how do you get the stories at the RVI? At, yeah. At the RVA um, heard by the people that are doing the uh, the, the board game at the Somali Bantu Center. Yeah. Or 
you know, they're, it's just so broken up. Yeah, there's so many different so divisions. It's, so it's it's much harder to answer that question than it was uh, in the 70s. Yeah, definitely. I... CCTV started in 1984, mm -hmm. and, and I was involved with Lauren Glenn. Yeah. In that, and I was doing video of people people in Henry's Cafe at seven in the morning telling stories. Yeah. You know, I was just I was just shooting it. A real know, natural. As, as a continuation of my photography. Okay. There was no public access. Yeah. And Lauren Glenn, who had done her university paper, uh, honors paper, I think, on Winneski, yeah. she and I got to know each other yeah. because of the Winneski. And then she she's the one that went and got the cable company. I think it was Cox Cable yeah. to open up an hour a week for for uh, what we now call public access. Mm -hmm. So what – so you said that you were involved with um, Lauren Glenn. But what at first like interested you about CCTV or like what made you want to be with Lauren Glenn to pursue this mission? Oh, it was amazing because the stuff that we were shooting, you didn't see on television. You know, yeah. it was it was whatever. It was the real people. people. Yeah, it's what interested people. It was you didn't know what you were going to see. It wasn't news. It wasn't um, you know the, the important stuff that's on the other channels. Yeah, and it was great. People saw their neighbors. Uh, it, it was very exciting. Yeah, definitely. And so what? Lost that train of thought, but um, happened. It's easy to do. It is. So, um, was it like a natural? Um, you becoming involved? Did like Lauren kind of like persuade you to join her, or were you like, "This is something I want to be a part of. I'm doing this with you." Oh no, we we we, we had we had a different skills. I mean, yeah. she she got the cable companies to to open up a time slot, mm -hmm. and then we had. Um, I remember we used to have people that had cameras. It was the, that era of camcorders. And um, people had them and didn't know how to use them. The Girl Scouts had one. They didn't know yeah. how to use it. So so we would invite people to um, join us to see how to use. how to. And, and, and the idea was make a make a video of something important to you that's under five minutes. Yeah. And... Um, and it was it was it was revolutionary yeah. to see that on television. It was. I mean, definitely seeing everyday people. I mean, it's, now they can make any as long as it's not too out there. You could come here and you could do any show essentially you want on any topic. Oh yeah. Which I think is very <clears throat> big. A big part of community media is the availability and the possibilities to make something like that and to have the freedom. Um, to, I will say that at that time. There were no studios. No, no. And and in some ways, it was very interesting because people had these little camcorders, mm -hmm. and they're out in the world, um, shooting stuff. Yeah. Um, we we did a in nineteen in two thousand. Um, this is a there's a town in Nicaragua that's a sister city. Yeah. And and uh, we got some editing equipment, the VHS fitting equipment. Mm -hmm from here and we took five cameras and we had 18 people in that community to learn how to tape what they thought was their their community was about yeah and that was it was absolutely revolutionary mm -hmm. one hour a week same as here the cable mm -hmm. company gave us one hour a week and these kids put their um, their stuff up and they and they suddenly saw people a grandmother sitting in a on the street corner speaking mosquito yeah talking i mean it was it opened up the, the media to to uh to people's lives yeah and it's that's a good example of a non-exploitive um way of showing a community that most people wouldn't see because um if you're looking at some video of some rural community in nicaragua or venezuela or, or basically any country that's not as developed as the u.s um many times that film that video those pictures they might not have been taken with the community's interest um so seeing it from the community that people that live there is definitely an interesting perspective that is hard to hard to find well now it's it's um you know media is so 
vast yeah. on TikTok. And we were, I was talking to a woman on the bus yesterday mm -hmm. that says she, she puts all of her videos. She's a 60-year-old woman. Mm -hmm. She sings. She puts them up. Um, I, I don't know how I'm going to find them. I mean, in, yeah. other words, in other words, people are they're doing a lot with media and they're somehow getting it out there, but they're not reaching people that don't know them so, yeah. so much. There's some, there's, there's a, a kind of a, um, a wall. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm trying to, cause it's not like, you can't really have too much media, but, or like an oversaturation of it. But at one point, at what point is there, so much media that it's hard for people their own things to actually well, I'd connect like to, i'd like to see her on channel 17 see i still watch television yeah. i watch channel 17 yeah you guys never you never say what's on it doesn't you know the description of what you're watching is either wrong or not on there it says yeah. government access so it's always a surprise but i would love to see uh you know a five minute video of her TikTok yeah. stuff on com community television. Yeah, that would definitely be interesting. But I don't know how you how you get all those things. I mean, yeah. people are kind of isolated. And... Yeah, it's very... Isolation is a huge thing now, especially after COVID. Um, so I'm, I know you also used um, Front Porch Forum, right, to connect with people? Is that... I've done a lot of series um, <clears throat> about Winesky as it's changed. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, Front Porch Forum <clears throat> was a resource because the stories were already there. Yeah. So people, you know what that Front Porch Forum is, right? Yeah. So, they, so people would, <clears throat> they would list something, you know, we've got a chicken and we've got eggs and we've got, uh, we want to sell our eggs and so forth. So I would, that was easy. I could start with the stories and I could go meet the people and mm. I could say, I want to do a, a collaborative picture with you saying something about your, your story. Yeah. And, you know, the woman says, well, I've got chickens. I've got a husband. I said, that's good. A baby. Uh, and then I w I'd never take a camera. Yeah. When I meet people, I'd say, okay, I'll come back next Saturday. And we'd set it up and we got in the chicken coop and we got the baby and mm -hmm. the chickens are running around. And, so that's the making of the photograph. That's, yeah. that's my selfish. I like that. Mm -hmm. How do you show it all? <clears throat> well, Front Porch Forum is a. It's on the internet. Yeah. So they're looking on their screens. Yeah. So, so I I made uh, big pictures. I think I had about thirty. Mm -hmm. And I and I put them in the the coffee shop in Winooski, right on the corner there. Yeah. And one of the things about collaborating with people is if they're in the show they're going to come to the opening yeah exactly and you can usually get uh, the coffee shop i think uh, had some pastries or something mm -hmm. and most of the people that are that are in the show came down to it and and what what happened is they actually met each other uh there's a, a woman an artist a glass artist her name is Terry, okay. and she spells her name T E R R Y, which is which most people knew her from Front Forge Forum, but they assumed it was a man. Yes, yeah. And and they were so surprised to see her at the opening. You're yeah. Terry. Yeah, so you're not a man. And and so so that was a good example of a different way of how do you access community stories and get people to to engage. Yeah, no, I definitely think it's a great way to do that because they're already sharing the story. It's not like Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook where you're posting a photo or video of something completely random maybe, but it's you're sharing it with intent, with purpose. Um, so I definitely think that was a interesting part of Front Porch Forum, what made it so different and also Portrait form is very interesting. It's it's a limited number of people who use it. Yeah, definitely. I don't know who read who maybe more people read it, but the people who post um, are kind of a self um, selecting. Yeah, group. no, it's definitely. I'm in a few Facebook groups with my hometown, and I think it's um, kind of a similar um, similar thing. Um, so with a little bit of time left. So I see you have. Um, your photos. So I'd love to take a look at these. Okay, well, this is, um, I'll aim this at the camera. <laughs> yeah. This is a uh, cover of a book and, and the, the first, uh, 
this page was shot in 1973, and this was shot uh, in the 2000s from the same window. Mm. Very interesting. Yeah. And and what I don't know what we could do with this book. Um, this is a, a lot of what my history in mm -hmm. Lansky has been about. So you have the onion portraits. Uh, you can look at it. Yeah. Yeah. There are, there are about seven different projects. Okay. So this, not like um, a port, not a portfolio, but a way of kind of bringing these projects together in one format, you would say? Or was it more just a pleasure project? Or The book is a history, yeah. Okay. When I moved to Burlington, the Corporation Hall, they had um, bingo every night. Yeah. Every night. What is in... What are in these cages? It's the bingo. That's oh, the, that's, yeah. There's an air thing that blows the balls up. Okay. And the bars were all, I mean, there's a lot of stories in there. I don't oh, know. yeah, you could tell just by looking at the people, looking at the expressions on their faces or what they're doing. That. All right, these are the original. Yeah, so these are some of the onion ones. She's a woman who came. Uh, she saw the series and said, you come to my apartment. And I, want to, I don't want to be on the street. These are just some guys in there. Mm -hmm. It's a very diverse... Uh, and I like how it's a very natural... Like, it's not a perfect photo. <laughs> like, it's... Like, I like. I feel like that gives... Adds to the character of it. Adds to her character yeah, that, and stuff. Um, I definitely think that adds to just all of it. Um, and then, But then you have a photo like this, where it's a very... A less candid portrait. Um so I think it's interesting. She, yeah, well, they all held the they all held the onion differently. Yeah. You know, you know there's I don't know what's in here. This is a barber. No. He, okay. He, 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 he a, this is the girl that uh, was a the girl that came and said, "I have a dress and I'm I want to be photographed in." Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, you could just tell by the photos that there's a lot of history or just stories with the people in them. Yeah, these were from the well, some of the seventies going yeah. back. Let's see what else is in here. Um, when this case changed a lot, this was a period when the refugees mm, okay. settlement was bringing in families, and I was trying to get families to hold an onion. Yeah. Uh, and include something of of the culture they'd come from. Yeah, these guys wanted to have the lion. Mm. <laughs> these Sudanese guys. Yeah, with Michael Jordan in the back. These oh, this family from Iran. Yeah, um, they were amazing. They uh, they went up to Montreal and they got food uh, from Iraq. I think they were, and they and they made a dinner. That's awesome. So the stories. The, the collaborations, uh, this allowed me to meet these families. Um, you know, and as the, as, the, as the town, this is front port forum stuff. I don't know. I'm giving a talk about, on this whole history here, if you're interested. In, when is, when's that going to be? Senior center, I think it's on the 13th. All right. Yeah, it definitely tells the whole story of the town. Very interesting. You know, in the Front Forge Forum, these people had a tree that had fallen down, and they you, you got the writing. Yeah. And they invited people to come up and get some um, wood for sculptures. Mm -hmm. um, stories. Yeah, yeah. exactly. They're, that's what they are. They're stories and the people of these stories. Um. Um, and then I did a show which, is, which was more about... Um, this is an interesting one. This is a, a front porch forum item. I put everybody was complaining about the F 35s yeah, and still are. <laughs> so I put out a front porch forum. I said, you know, people have to co cover their hands. Yeah. Send me photographs of of any situation you're in where you're where you're having to cover your mm. hands. I got lots of them, and so this is a collage I put together from lots of different people's. Um, yeah. That they sent me. And then I, this is this is a series I did where the photographs are um, cool. put up on the walls. 
do think unfortunately we're at time even though i know we could keep talking about these photos <laughs> all day um but yeah thank you so much for coming to join us is there joining you yeah is there any other parting words you would like to i don't have any parting words it's right. kind of early in the day for yeah keep it keep them on their toes <laughs> awesome well thank you for coming thank you for listening <laughs>